Joining us now for expert analysis is Tal Reshef, Asia-Israel consultant. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, look, China proposed this whole new forum for East Asia. What do you make of it? Well, it's not the only thing they proposed. They proposed a bundle of things. Uh, they proposed Southeast Asia, a, a lot of aid in the Mekong River project and the uh, South Asia Railway, the SAR, uh, which will help uh, develop. They, they offer many things because China has got a huge interest in Southeast Asia and Southeast Asia, the ASEAN countries have a huge interest in China. They have a, a circle of something like half a trillion dollars commerce a year. It's huge. It's uh, for uh, ASEAN countries, this is the first partner, the first commercial partner, China. For China, this is the third after uh, United States and EU. So we are talking here about something which is very complex. On the economic part, it includes all that I have mentioned and more. There are more than that. The, the, uh, the uh, Development Bank of Asia also. And it is not only co economic, it's also geopolitical with the of South course. Uh, and China that, Sea. Exactly. And I wanted to ask you that because certainly this is an interesting time with those tensions just heating up now, especially with the tribunal and, of course, the Philippines heating up there as well with China. Is this an effort by China, Beijing, to wield more influence in that area of the world? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, first of all, th this uh moment in time it makes it very crucial for China, of course, because of the tensions, because of the presence of the Americans, because of uh, the protests from the, the side, not only the Philippines, also Malaysia and Brunei and others, and Vietnam uh, overall. Uh, but for the long term, China is always working in, with the long term view, and they know that Southeast Asia is going to be crucial for its development. It always. I mean, just see the, the volume of commerce, of shipping and aviation that is passing in this area. See this volume of commerce that I've just mentioned. It is always going to be very central. See the, the, the dependence of China uh, on raw material and the agricultural products coming from this area. So China understands that it must um, put a lot of effort into good relations with this area, combined with its uh, aspiration, strategic aspiration, South China Sea, they're trying to, to make all this together, which is not easy at all. Well, you mentioned this dynamic, but it does seem that the Southeast Asian countries need China far more. Uh, yes, commercially speaking, yes, they need China more than China needs them, but it is not really a, a, a real way of looking at it, because even if on the table China needs them less than they need China, still China needs them enormously. I mean, take for instance the, the, the major product of China, which is the, the new Silk Road. It the, 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 the passes between China and Europe, uh, but it, uh, it passes also not only by trains and roads along Asia, it passes also maritime way, and then it passes through South China Sea and through Maluka uh, Straits, through Singapore. It means that the major product of uh, China depends on it. They've already de started de uh, developing this SAR, which is a, a network of railway of 350 kilometers per hour passing from Kunming in South China, through Laos and Vietnam from one hand, through Myanmar and Thailand on the other hand, in, in order to reach uh, Singapore, which means that the major interest of China depends on Southeast Asia. All right. Well, thank you very much for your insight. To appreciate it. Now